Hi guys! So a couple of weeks ago I announced that a book haul video was coming soon and I'm afraid that announcement was overly optimistic. In my defense though I have actually filmed the haul. I filmed it twice actually but the first time it was just awful and the second time the audio was broken and I simply can't do it again. So today I am instead doing something that I'm much more excited about and that is a TBR video for the spooky, cold and cozy reading season. Now before we get into it, a couple of disclaimers. One, this is more like a pile of possibilities, a pile of books that I would like to read in the cold and spooky dark season just because they fit the vibe. But it's not necessarily a strict TBR as in I am definitely going to read these books. It's more like a pool from which I'm going to choose my reads this winter. So from October onwards until January, February. Second of all, this isn't all of the books that I'm going to read in the coming months or that I'm going to read from in the coming months. It's just the seasonal ones. Um, this pile of possibility does not include a TBR slash pile of possibilities that I'm going to make for German Literature Month, which is November. I don't even know if this is still a thing on the bookish internet, but I'm definitely going to do it because reading more German books is always one of my bookish New Year's resolutions. And I'm also going to film a kind of Winter Wonderland TBR for books that I'm going to read during the Christmas season or that I'm excited about for Christmas and midwinter, um, winter in general, Christmas, January. So I have sorted the books into four categories, the first being spooky stories, creepy, eerie stories or outright horror, the second being stories that are very atmospheric but not necessarily spooky and or cozy books. The third one is big fantasy books, which are best read during the dark season when you have long evenings stretching out before you. And the last one is new releases, which are books which are going to be released in the coming months and which are therefore by default autumnal, even though they don't necessarily fit any of the other three categories, although some of them do. Okay, on to the books now. I'm going to start with the spooky ghostly stories. And my first book is one that I've been looking forward to reading for a few weeks, if not months now, but I've been waiting patiently for the beginning of spooky season, which is just around the corner, I'd say. It is The Haunting Season, Ghostly Tales for Long Winter Nights. And it is a collection of spooky stories by Bridget Collins, Imogen Hermes Gower, Natasha Pulley, Jess Kidd, Laura Purcell, Andrew Michael Hurley, Kieran Millwood Hargrave and Elizabeth McNeil. Um, so I already know that I'm not going to read all of them. There are at least two stories in the collection um, which are written in present tense, which I just cannot do. And the first author, if you remember, is Bridget Collins. She wrote um, The Binding, which is the stupidest string of cliches that I have read in quite a while. Maybe the worst book of 2022. And I'm not even going to bother with the story. But the ebook is pretty cheap on Amazon or was when I bought it. And um, it's out in paperback now, or just coming out in paperback in the next few weeks or so. 
Um, so I think this book has flown under the radar of most people. There were a couple of very popular, very well-liked authors in there, but I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this book, but maybe that's just me and my, I don't know, my limited booktube horizon. Anyhow, my next creepy, eerie read is A Skin Full of Shadows by Frances Harding one of the masters of creepy and spooky. And this is the story of a young girl who um, lives during the English Civil War and gets possessed by the spirit of a dead bear. Um, I don't know much more about it, to be honest, but this, um, these few informations alone sound so interesting and Frances Harding is such a skilled writer of children's stories with a lot of important issues and questions of the bottom of them. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be a wonderfully atmospheric, cozy, spooky read. And then we've got another ebook. Fellside by M. R. Carey, author of The Girl with All the Gifts and the um, E. coli, no, the um, the Book of Coli and its sequel. Um, and Fellside is, I think, a horror story. It's set, or at least it begins, in a high security prison at the edge of the North York Moors, which, hello, this setting alone, take all my money. And it is about a young woman, I think, who is a prisoner in the prison, um, who starts to hear the voice of a young boy who died in a fire which she is responsible for or um, allegedly responsible for, I'm not sure. Um, but like I said, the setting alone a high security prison on the edge of the North York Moors and with this book cover, no questions asked. <laughs> no questions asked. Next book is Echo by Thomas Olde Heuvelt, which is a book that I don't yet own because I can't make up my mind as to what edition I want to buy or what translation is more to the point. This book is Dutch in the original, so it would make sense to buy a German translation because German is very close to Dutch. However, the German translation is pretty expensive, they always are, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I have my problem with German writing and the writing of German translators in particular. So I'm really not quite sure. Anyhow, what is this book about? It's about a man who is reliving um, a tragic accident that happened, a mountaineering accident that happened to him and his best friends slash partner, I think, and he died in the accident. However, it may not actually have been a simple accident. There may have been something supernatural going on, or maybe not. Um, and I think the surviving one kind of goes through this episode in the hospital and during reconvalescence. I'm always one for books about mountaineering and if they are spooky, all the better. With my next book, we are veering into atmospheric and cozy territory because I don't think there's actually anything really supernatural or fantastical or horror-y going on in this book. Um, but who knows, there might be. It is Affinity by Sarah Waters, which is about a spiritualist, a medium in Victorian London, who is imprisoned for being a fraud. But is she or is she not, really? 
I have to say this isn't really my favorite time period or my favorite topic to read about, but I've wanted to read Sarah Waters for so long and this is at the end of the day exactly the right book for the season. And then there is The Leviathan by Rosie Andrews, which is a 2022 release. And it's about a young man who returns from the English Civil War. I think he's been discharged because of an injury. And he returns home only to find that his father has passed away. The farm is in disarray. And his sister is, a, is accusing a maid of having wrought witchcraft on her father. And I think pretty soon the whole village is implicated in in the scandal and either as an accused or as an accuser. Um, with this book, I also don't know if there's actually going to be anything supernatural really going on or if it's just your ordinary witchcraft craze. But I've already, I already started it and put it down again, in fact, because um, the atmosphere is just so bleak that it didn't fit the July mood at all. <laughs> July was when I started it. So I put it down to pick back up again during spooky, rainy season. And then we have Hawksmoor by Peter Aykroyd which is a mystery set in London in present times, whatever that was for the book. Let me just quickly check um, the 80s, um, first published in 1985. And a police officer in London, a detective, is investigating a series of pretty gruesome murders, I think, which may have their origin or their motive in the past in the the 18th century and there might be some rather twisted mysticism at the heart of it. I think just the title alone, Hawksmoor, even if it's just the detective's last name, sounds so atmospheric, so autumnal and related to that is the only non-fiction book on my list, The More, by William Atkins, which is about, well, the geographic phenomenon of The More and um, about several specific moors on the British Isles. And there is something inherently spooky about moors and about reading about moors, isn't there? And I can't think of a better time to read a nonfiction book about moors than autumn and foggy season. But veering more into winter and cold season, we have Midwinter by John Buchan, which is um, a book about an agent who is sent out by Bonnie Prince Charlie to gather supporters for his cause. Um, I actually started reading The 39 Steps by John Buchan a while ago and it didn't really grab me. I thought it was, well, it was inadvertently ridiculous and implausible. I, at least I think it, um, the book isn't aware of how ridiculous and implausible it is, but I might be wrong there. I need to give it a second chance, but if it is the case and it is unself-aware, then I just hope that the same isn't the case with midwinter. Um, it's just that the topic draws me to it magnetically. <laughs> And with the next one, it's mostly the cover that is wintry. It's um, Butcher's Crossing by John Williams, author of Stoner. And this is kind of a reverse stoner. or um, It more or less sounds to me like a novel version of um, all the themes of Into the Wild. So a disenchanted, disillusioned Harvard or Yale academic 
um, Harvard sets out for the West to discover a new way of living. So um, living authentically close to nature, um, living off the land, you know, and um, I don't know, by the means of one's own handiwork. And in the end, of course, he, I think, gets uh, disabused of his romantic notions about um, life in the wilderness and living off the land. Um, I'm, I'm not sure actually if such a topic really warrants such a long book, but anyhow, um, I think this might also be the most atrocious case of a fake sticker ruining a beautiful book cover. Especially since the um, these vintage editions with a red spine are always so nicely minimalistic, and here this minimalistic cover gets completely taken over by this huge fake sticker, and I hate it. Next, we have the classic genre for cozy autumn and winter nights, a cozy mystery, or at least I think it is a cozy one. Um, it's definitely a mystery and probably a very entertaining one. Um, it's A Morbid Taste for Bones by Alice Peters, which is the first in the Brother Catfell Chronicles about a monk who solves crimes and in this first one he is sent out to obtain relics um, that however the community to, from which he is supposed to obtain them doesn't really want to give them up or at least not everyone wants to give them up and the case apparently brings up some old enmities rivalries and at the end in the end a murder happens and our monk who was only sent to gather some old bones is now going to have to solve the case of <laughs> some new bones <laughs> that have been produced so to speak um I think this is going to be a really cozy and really funny read for a lazy weekend. And finally, we have some proto-fantasy that I want to include here because it is, well, it's not really in the same category with the high fantasy, epic fantasy books that I'm I have in my third category. It's The King of Elfland's Daughter. It's, well, proto-fantasy. It's more or less set in our world or a world that resembles um, late medieval, early modern England very much. Um, and in this English-like kingdom, um, the people have put pressure on the king to reintroduce or introduce magic into their kingdom and the king therefore sends out his son to go get the king of Elfland's daughter's hand in marriage. And this is really a classic of fantasy before fantasy was really a thing. That's why I'm calling it proto-fantasy and it's of historical interest as well as of just of entertainment value i think it's maybe there's maybe more historical value to it than entertainment value but who knows i might be wrong with that assessment my next group of books are epic fantasy books long epic fantasy books and here we have the longest of them all rhythm of war by brendan sanderson fourth installment in the um, Stormlight archive series which is going to be a series of 10 books and what can I say it's a masterpiece this series but it's also a bit demotivating to look at to be honest <laughs> And then we have A Magic Car by Clive Barker, a story about a group of people who travel through time and space 
through dimensions, from world to world, on the trail, I think, of some crime or plot or conspiracy, which I'm sure is putting reality and the multiverse and everything um, in danger of being snuffed out of existence, probably, or some other really highly apocalyptic threat, as it always is with epic fantasy. The stakes are always the highest you can imagine. And then we have The Queens of Innes Lear by Tessa Gretton, which is the story of King Lear, or inspired by the story of King Lear, but told from the perspective of his three daughters, or at least it puts the daughters in the center, the daughters who in the story rebel against their father and take matters into their own hands and are trying to save the fate of Inneslia, their island, um, on their own or against the will of their father. And this is just also one of the most beautiful fantasy books that I own. I think it's it's both incredibly decorative and minimalistic, really. And I'm afraid you can't really see it because of the glare, um, the reflection from the lamp. But maybe you get an idea of how beautiful it is regardless. And now we've come to the last group, the new releases or upcoming releases, I should say. And here the first book is, again, a really spooky, creepy, probably horror one. It's The Toll House by Carly Reagan, out on the 6th of October, I think. Um, this one's the story of a, a woman with a young son who moves into an old toll house on the edge of a small town, I think. Um, it's supposed to be their safe haven, but when they move in there, something awakens in the house and takes possession, I think, of a young son. And she has to get to the bottom of it to save him or to save both of them. And it just sounds the title and the cover look and sound like the creepiest, most atmospheric thing ever, don't they? And on the 15th of November, we have Pulling the Wings of Angels by K.J. Parker, which is a Tor.com novella by K.J. Parker. He is quite a big name in fantasy, but I've never read anything by him and I've wanted to for a while. And a novella is, of course, always a good, a good get-to-know-you book if you want to get to know a new author. And Pulling the Wings of Angels sounds fascinating. It's, um, it's a fantasy, I think it's set in a secondary world where um, apparently ages ago or centuries ago at least, um, an angel was kidnapped and put into a church and now a theology student or novice, I don't know, um, is kind of forced, blackmailed um, to get her out of there and, I don't know, return her to her owners or if she's actually alive, I don't know, return her, her to her people, I don't know. Um, but in any case, angel kidnapped, put into a church and now a, it's kind of, it, it's a heist story at the end of the day with the, a church being the target and I very much like that idea in novella form. And then we have two books that kind of go without saying. The first one is the third book in the Dreamer trilogy, Grey Warren by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, the Dreamer trilogy is a um, spin-off or a sequel trilogy to The Raven Cycle, which I think you should definitely read first if you want to get the most out of the Dreamer trilogy. Um, it's YA, it sounds, the description of the first book, The Raven Boys, sounds like the worst 
sappy YA fantasy romance that you can imagine. And this is really isn't my kind of thing. I have avoided YA and especially YA fantasy for a while now. But I was willing to gamble on this book, The Raven Boys, and I'm so glad that I did. Maggie Stiefvater is really a class of her own, and I enjoy her writing very much, and I would really recommend The Raven Boys and The Raven Cycle to anybody who likes no urban fantasy or fantasy that is set in our world. The Dreamer trilogy is quite a different beast. It's really it's it's really a grown-up trilogy and I'm so The Dreamer trilogy is a very different beast. It's really a grown-up trilogy and the the second book ended in quite a shocking manner and I'm so curious to see how Maggie Stiefvater and all of us readers are going to get back from the point at which the second book ended. It's going to be a tough ride, I think. And my second book that goes without saying is The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy. It's one of two new Cormac McCarthy's that are going to be released this autumn and these are autobuys for me and I'm so curious to see what these two books are going to be like. Um, 15 years now after the release of The Road, it's going to be so interesting. And I also might be persuaded to read Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell, which is a space opera romance, just like her debut novel um, Winter's Orbit, which sounded a bit too silly for me. The premise is that... Um Anyhow, Ocean's Echo sounds like a really delightful quest story and I haven't read sci-fi romans before so I'd like to try this out and the cover is really pretty again and I'm basic like that. So this is my cold slash spooky season TBR, my pool of books that I would like to draw from this autumn and winter. Apart from all the other books that I'm in the mood to pick up and apart from the other pools <laughs> that I'm going to film soon. If you've read any of these books, as always I'd like to know what you thought about them. And do let me know if you've found a book in this my pool that you are curious about and that you will now put on your own autumn and winter TBR. I'll see you again very soon, guys. Take care. Bye.